All right, today I've got four exercises for you to do for your back and core strength. Now, these are really easy entry-level exercises, but really good for people who don't do much core work or they've had a little bit of back pain or suffering from back pain in the past and you're getting into exercise and you need to do a little bit of core work. So these ones are dialed down a little bit and I'm gonna go through options for you guys to get them done to help out your back pain and get back training. Start off with doing planks using your sofa. It'll give you an incline, which means that you're just gonna take some of the load off. And if you start on your knees, it's even easier. And this is really good for those of you who don't really do planks or don't do too much core work. You might do fitness, but you're not doing much core work. This is a really good entry level set of exercises. So instead of doing a plank like this, which you're not used to, I would go for just keep it easy. Use the sofa, which elevates you up. So start off on your elbows and your knees. Now this may seem really easy, but if you get your pelvis in the right position here, then you can focus on making sure all the components of the plank are correct. So you're not arching your back, okay? So you have gotta keep your spine in neutral. So that's the first thing. You have gotta keep your core on. So you're sort of holding your TA, holding your wee on, making sure that anterior core is actually statically working for you. And then with your arms, you're gonna push away from the sofa. So don't sit down into this position and hold it. Try and be active in your shoulders. Keep away from the sofa like that. Have your hands parallel, thumbs up like that. So you're really pushing through your shoulders. Now, the other thing you gotta think about is turn your glutes on. So from that position there, dig your toes in a little bit, Keep your glutes on so you've got everything working for you because this is an endurance exercise. You're gonna keep this on for at least a minute. So I want you making sure you're in neutral with your lower back, your core's on, you're using your transversus and your pelvic floor a little bit, you're turning your glutes on, you're pushing away, and you can statically hold that and breathe at the same time for at least a minute, preferably going up to one or two minutes. Now that's gonna give you that baseline feeling of what you're supposed to be achieving in a plank with your body. Then all you need to do is add load. And so you'd go onto your feet on an angle. So the progression would be from here, get yourself in the right position, straighten one leg, and then straighten the other. And instantly you'll feel that load. Now, then you've got to try and hold that from there. So definitely start off on an angle before you even think about going horizontal or knees horizontal. So that's your first one. Second one is a side plank. Now I love side planks, so I've done so many videos on them. But with a side plank when you're a bit of back pain, sometimes the traditional side plank on your knees like this is too hard for you, especially if you're a bit of acute back pain. Now, if you're a bit weak, then this is gonna be a bit hard and you're gonna compensate. So what I suggest you do is you come actually away from the floor again. So similar to the front plank, if you go up on an angle on the side plank and stay on your knees, there's less load through your system. Therefore, it's easy to achieve the right positioning and get that baseline form and control before you start adding on load. That's the key. Don't get too keen to put on too much load and get some amazing results especially if you've got a bit of a dodgy back. So, I would go, use your sofa again from this position. There's your side plank there. Now, don't make the mistake of lifting up from there. You've still got to rock back and sit in this position here and then making sure that that is nice and stable. So be watching of this pillow. Come back, give a nice stable surface there, rock into that sitting position and then push forward and up into the bridge. Now this takes care of you doing bridges because you're, you know, we're only giving you four exercises today. This is like a bridge, but it's on your side. So in this position, make sure, again, pelvic floor, TA is on. You have gotta keep that anterior core system working for you. And you're gonna start feeling this clearly on one side here. So your obliques, your lats, QL is gonna be working harder there. With this exercise, to make your lat post down into your thoracolumbar fascia, you need to make your lat work. So if you grab the back of your shoulder and pull back, then your lat's on. Now that gives you a big anchor through your lower back, which connects into your glute, but you've got to have your glutes on. So lat's got to be on. This has got to be up level. You've got to be thrusted forward into full neutral. So I'm in full hip extension there, okay? Neutral, zero hip extension. 
not sitting back in there. Okay, so you, when you come up, you've got to come right forward as though you're at the top of a bridge into that position. Squeeze both buttocks. Okay, both buttocks. You're holding on there and then breathing. Okay, so in this position, I'm already feeling because I've been talking for quite a bit, but you've got to hold this again for a minute or so. Now, if that's too hard for you, make this higher. Okay, the higher that is, the more up on an angle. So you could go on your bench top at home, okay, kitchen bench or a chair or something like that, where you put some load this way. Now, of course, you're going to have to go on your feet in this position, but you can hold yourself on an angle. So if the sofa's too low, just elevate a little bit higher, make sure it's sturdy, same sort of drill. You hold that for long enough, you're going to feel that right through that side. That's where we want the strengthening and the endurance control to be happening, which helps you with your back pain and your core rehab. So essential that you get side planks done. So no matter where you are in your sort of back, as far as whether it's sore or it's recovering, that's the sort of stuff you need to be start doing. All right, number three is to help you with your anterior, posterior tilt and positioning when you're exercising. So this one's really important for standing posture, running, sport, to try and keep the core on and keep you in neutral at the same time to stop you getting a little bit of a back niggle. So I do this one on my back. Now I've got a little spin on this one. For those of you that tend to start doing this sort of thing, I'm gonna dial it back because some people, if they're starting out the core work or they've got a bit of back pain, it's too hard. So I want you to keep one foot on the ground and we're gonna put one leg out and keep it on the ground or above the ground in that position. But there's things you gotta think about up here when you're doing this. First thing you gotta work on is making sure you're in neutral. So I don't want your back arching off the ground and you certainly don't wanna flatten it to try and cheat like that. So you've got to keep a reasonable little tiny curve in there. All right, so that's your neutral spine. You've gotta keep this part toned and turned on. So you've got to use your pelvic floor and TA. If you don't know how to do that, check out my TA pelvic floor video. That'll really help you work out what to do here. Once you've got that, put one leg on the ground and load down through the heel. So you've got a bit of weight down through the heel which turns your glute on. This one, once you've got that core on, lifts up. As you lower, you've got to keep your neutral spine here. So don't let the leg arch your back. So this is the whole thing about this exercise is can I, when I move my leg, can I keep a neutral spine here and keep that on? Now, this is the endurance part. This is the good part for when you, if you've been out walking, you've been out running, because you are doing a lot more of that lately, this is where you've got to learn your endurance. You're gonna keep one leg out there static and this core on. And I want you to try and hold it there for one to two minutes. It's gonna to be tough. You may find you get 30 seconds and you're gonna have a rest, but that's the, the position you've got to be in to try and learn some sort of endurance here about keeping that neutral spine while there's a long lever load, which is really helpful for when you're walking or running. When you're moving that leg, trying to keep the endurance of keeping that a neutral spine. All right, your last one is my little alternative to doing sit-ups because people who are new to core work, a bit under-conditioned, or have had a bit of back pain, sit-ups are probably going to aggravate it. So this is the alternative. Now this is the McGill Top 3. So one of the really, really good exercises for core strength and stability anyway. I'll show you what I want you to do. When you're doing this, this is called a McGill sit-up. It's an alternative. I don't want you doing this thing. Okay, so I don't want you doing sit-ups for this set of exercise. We're doing almost like a half sit-up but we're looking after our lower back and we're just trying to train the sort of top part here to get some endurance and some strength in your rectus abdominis into that flexion position without flexing your lower back. It's a little bit tricky, but it's nice low level entry work for you to do for when you're in this sort of situation. So to do it, one hand under your back. Now what you're feeling for, one, you're sort of, that's keeping your curve if you like but you're feeling for whether your back is flattening onto your hand or not. The other leg goes straight. So one leg straight to keep some part of your spine neutral. Okay, so one leg straight. And then your hand can just rest behind your head if you like, but you're trying not to use your hand to pull your neck. You're trying to go ribs down to belly button. So when you come up, you breathe out, ribs to belly button, 
slowly back. So you can see I'm not doing a full sit-up. I'm only doing a half bit until you get a bit of a shake like that where you can't go any further. Because what happens is you run out of range because your back's going to flatten on your hands. So you come up, there's, feel the weakness, feel the shake, slowly back. Don't just drop it back, slowly up, bit of a pause, slowly back, okay? So you're aiming for tone and a bit of strengthening work here, which is just going to help you with your overall strength through your abdominals and that's one of the part of the four that I give you today. Stay tuned for the next one because we're going to go and advance that. So for people who are a little bit more advanced than that, we're going to go to stage two. See you next time.